It has been more than four years since the civil war in Syria began, and so far over 220,000 people have been killed. Now, today, with the help of our correspondent Ala Ibrahim, we begin the first of a five-part series looking at the suffering of the Syrian people during this period. How are they coping? What everyday struggles do people face living in the crisis-hit country? Let's take a look. This used to be the main bus terminal for Damascus. From here, over 300 trips headed out every day, connecting different parts of the country. Today, the bustling avenue is reduced to rubble, as it sits on the front line between the Syrian army and a radical rebel faction in Kabun, on the outskirts of the capital. No more bus terminals. The trips leave and return to this highway, which is the last point of safety before embarking into the unfriendly lands of Damascus countryside. Life goes on here. For a moment, you would forget that battles are less than a kilometer away, but a reminder would surely and swiftly come your way. The transport industry that was once called Sirius Gold is no more. Abu Ayman, a veteran driver with 25 years of experience, knows that this is a new world unlike anything he knew before. Before the war, I used to make 64 trips a month. Now, if I'm lucky, I get 12. No one travels the highways after dark. If the bus breaks down, the passengers will be terrified. They fear kidnapping and looting. And once you leave government areas, it is every man for himself. But even Abu Ayman still enjoys luxuries that his colleagues lack. He travels to the safe destination of Latakia, and hence, he can afford to talk to us, while others can't. Like Ahmad, a fake name used to protect the identity of a bus driver who travels to the Islamic State capital in Syria, Arraqa city. Arraqa is the main stronghold of ISIL in Syria. The fear of the notorious beheadings has made Ahmad, like all the passengers heading to insurgent heartland, hesitant to show their faces. To get to Raqqa, I crossed ten checkpoints, four for the government, one for al-Nusra, and five others for ISIL. They always bring us in for interrogation, accusing us of being government spies. Some of our friends were executed. We come to Damascus, and people think if you live under ISIL, then you are one of them. I drive university students and families of soldiers who serve in the army. They cannot come to Raqqa, so I bring their parents to them. Recent government gains in central Syria meant that there are more secure roads to travel. But even risky destinations have to be reached. Therefore, even an intimidating trip, like the one Ahmad takes every two days, has its customers. Ahmad's assistant calls on passengers and bargains with them. His mind is not with ISIL at the moment. He is more worried about the competition. Boxes of goods waiting to be transported and shipped across war zones lay witness to how the violence and endless fighting cripple the country's movement and economy. Every time bus drivers head out of Damascus, they roll the dice in a dangerous game. A game where the smallest of decisions could be life-altering choices. What road to take? Who's controlling that road? Do they have the right credentials for that road? Will the sniper try and shoot at the road today? No one knows. These are some of the questions that haunt every bus driver traveling across the country, making their jobs some of the most difficult jobs in Syria today. But all of the drivers I have spoken with told me that even with a job as difficult as this one, they're grateful to have a job in these difficult times of hardship and war. Allah Ibrahim, CCTV. Demasco.